Hi there. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can go about solving quadratic equations that do not factorize. And the method we use is completing the square. Although there is another method, and that is by using what is called the quadratic formula. But essentially, it's based on the method I'm going to show you. So as you can see, I've got three examples here. And the last one here, I'm going to encourage you to have a go at trying this one. Or in fact, you might want to uh, have a go at any of these at any point. But I'll take you through how we solve them. So with the first one, x squared minus 8x equals 2, what I notice is it's not in the correct format. Remember, we always have quadratic equations in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Get it in this kind of format that you see here. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, we therefore end up with x squared minus 8x minus 2 equals 0. So you won't have to do that for these two here. They're already in that form. Next, we need to complete the square across the first two terms. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with completing the square. If not, do go back and check out the videos on completing the square that I've done. What we do is we start by having a bracket and putting a square around it. We can do this when it's 1x squared. When it's 3x squared or 2x squared, we need to do an extra step. So with this one, we take the x and we halve the coefficient of x. So we halve minus 8. So that's going to give us minus 4. And when you square this out, what you get is x squared, which is the first term here. You get a minus 4x and another minus 4x, which is minus 8x. But then you get minus 4 all squared, which is 16. And you'll notice we haven't got a 16 here. So by subtracting 16, this gives me just x squared minus 8x. Now to make it the same as this, I need to put that minus 2 in. And then we've got that it equals 0. So minus 16 minus 2 is minus 18. So what we do next is we add 18 to both sides. So that gives me x minus 4 all squared equals 18. And then I square root both sides. So if we square root the left hand side that just gives us x minus 4. And if we square root 18 well that's going to be plus or minus. Don't forget that the square root then of 18. And then we add 4 to both sides and that gives us x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 18. Now you could leave it like that but the square root of 18 can be broken down by thirds. It can be broken down to the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 2. I'm assuming that you're familiar with working with thirds. If not, again, do check out some of my earlier videos on this. So what we've therefore got now is 4 plus or minus, and we can square root 9. It's a square number as 3, but we can't square root 2 nicely, so we just leave it as root 2. And there's our answer then in exact form. Now, in the second example, with this one, you may notice that instead of having x squared, we've got the 3x squared. So we've got to do an additional step. And with this one, whatever number you've got out the front here, in this case 3, in this example it's a 2, we pull that number out in front of a bracket. So for this example, it would be 3 bracket, and then it would be x squared minus 6x. We only pull it out over the first two terms. It's easier that way. And then we've got the plus 1 and it equals 0. Now what we do next is we complete the square across these two terms here, x squared minus 6x. Very similar to what we just did here with x squared minus 8x. So I'll put the 3 down 
put up a square bracket this time here and we're just dealing with x squared minus 6x. So we put a bracket, have it squared, we put an x here and we halve the coefficient of x in here. So half of minus 6 is minus 3. Now if I expand the bracket here we would get x squared which agrees with the term in here we'd get minus 3x minus another 3x so that's minus 6x so that's looking good and then we'd get minus 3 all squared which is plus 9 but there is no 9 here so what we do is we subtract it so x minus 3 all squared minus 9 gives us x squared minus 6x so I just close the bracket here and then we've got the plus 1 on the end and then it equals 0. So I now expand the bracket here we've got two terms inside the bracket so we do 3 multiplied with the first term x minus 3 all squared then we do 3 times the minus 9 which is minus 27 and then we've got the plus 1 on the end and that equals 0. So minus 27 plus 1 is minus 26 so we add 26 to both sides giving us 3 times x minus 3 all squared equals 26. Now we divide both sides by the 3 so we end up with x minus 3 all squared equals 26 divided by 3. And for this we now square root both sides. Square root of x minus 3 all squared is just x minus 3. And when it comes to square rooting 26 thirds it's going to be plus or minus the root then of 26 divided by 3. And finally what we do is we add 3 to both sides and therefore we get x equals 3 plus or minus the square root then of 26 divided by 3 and that's our exact answer. Always check out that with a fraction like this when you're square rooting it it's the same as square rooting the top divided by the square root of the bottom but the square root of 26 you can't give us a value in this kind of format and the same applies to the root of 3 so just leave it like that one. Remember also if you're asked to give this as a decimal it's just a simple case of just entering this into your calculator. Now I did say that I'd encourage you to have a go at this last one. It's a little harder than the one that you've just done here but essentially it follows exactly the same method. So do have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video and when you come back we'll run through it. Okay welcome back then if you had a go. So it's in the correct format, it equals zero here so we don't have to rearrange it. So it's got a number in front of it other than one here so it's a two so we need to do what we did here that is pull the two out in front of a bracket and factorize then across these two terms so it's going to be x squared minus 5x and then we've got the minus 3 and that equals 0. Now we complete the square across x squared minus 5x so we put the 2 at the front have a square bracket and then for x squared minus 5x just have a bracket here all squared. Put x at the front and halve the coefficient of x. So this is going to be minus 2.5x but it's much better to write it as minus 5 over 2. Okay. Now if I was to square this bracket out I'd get x squared, I'd get minus 2.5x minus another 2.5x which is minus 5x but I'd also get this term squared which is going to be plus 25 over 4. Remember you square top and bottom here. But I haven't got 25 over 4 there so I subtract it so it's minus 25 
over 4, minus 25 quarters there. Next I just square off that bracket and then we'll put the minus 3 in and that equals 0. So I next need to multiply the bracket out with this 2. So if we do that we therefore have 2 times all of x minus 5 over 2 all squared and 2 times minus 25 quarters gives us 25 over 2 so that'd be minus 25 over 2 and then we've got minus 3 there and it equals 0 now minus 25 divided by 2 minus 3 whole ones think of this as 6 over 2 so you've got minus 25 over 2 minus 6 over 2 which is minus 31 over 2 and so I'm going to add 31 over 2 to both sides so therefore you get 2 times x minus 5 over 2 all squared equals 31 divided by 2 and I now divide both sides by 2 so therefore we get x minus 5 over 2 all squared equals and if I halve 31 over 2 I get 31 divided by 4 31 quarters there next I square root both sides and so square rooting the left hand side just gives me x minus 5 over 2 square rooting the right hand side gives me plus or minus the square root then of 31 divided by 4 and finally what we do is we add 5 over 2 to both sides so you end up with x equals 5 over 2 plus or minus now with this particular fraction that we've got to square root unlike this one over here okay we can't square root 31 very nicely but we can square root the 4 giving us the 2 so what we end up here with is the root of 31 all over 2 so I hope that's given you some idea then how we can solve quadratic equations where they do not factorize and we have to give them as the exact values remember that was a clue to suggesting that it's not going to factorize and we did it then by this method called completing the square now there's a quick way of doing this it still uses the method of completing the square but if we take the general algebraic form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero complete the square on that equation we end up with a formula saves us having to do this long-winded method so i definitely encourage you to take a look at that video and you'll find then that it will save you a lot of time